Hello, 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 people, people of the world. And I'm literally saying of the world, there's like 200 of us um, on all different continents and all different time zones. My name is Janelle. Um, I'm so excited because uh, here in the United States and in North America, it is Black History Month. Yay! Yay! Um, so uh, just a little bit of background. Uh, this event is hosted by Lightspeed. Lightspeed is a POS kind of point of sale system. We're going to learn a little bit more about them today. Um, and we have an amazing uh, Black business owner who uses Lightspeed in her restaurant that she founded with her husband. It's a very special time. I'm just looking at the chat. I'm going to shout out a little bit of where we have people uh, dialing in from. Okay, I see Montreal, Amsterdam is in the house. I see Georgia in the house, California is in the house. That's where I am. It's 7.03 over here. Um, I see Olympia, Flor Florida, Paris, Toronto, Palm Beach, UK, Providence. This is amazing. Oklahoma, this is incredible. Boston, okay. All right, Northern Ireland, Toronto, T.O. Uh, this is amazing. I am so glad that you are all here with us. We are recording today, so this is gonna be available for replay. This is a really special conversation. So we are gonna get into it. Um, we're gonna focus on the theme of how our esteemed business owner has created community over the years with uh, her husband. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna get her name right. We're gonna <laughs> say her name. And because I'm American and I did not take French in high school, um, would you please teach me how to say your name, Leanne? So, hi, my name is Diane Miller Lafleur. So, it's just uh, a yeah. little fun. Okay, I'm going to try it. <laughs> Leanne Miller Lafleur. Yeah, we're good. Is that good? That's good. Okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> and Leanne, uh, Leanne, what are your preferred pronouns? She, her. Okay, and mine are as well. All right, so let's get into it. You are the owner and founder of Palm Restaurant. Um, and if our light speeders could drop that URL, the website to Palm in the chat, that would be great. Um, Palm Restaurant is located in Montreal, Canada in a neighborhood called The Village. Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. So give us a little bit of backstory about um, you, your hubby, your family. So uh, yes, we're a couple. Uh, we have three beautiful children together. Um, we opened the restaurant in 2017. Um, and we have a Caribbean inspired restaurant. So we um, are inspired by anywhere that has a palm tree. That's why our name is Palm. Wow. Um, if you see that there's an E at the end, it's because it's written in French and we don't pronounce the E at the front. Um, so, um, so yeah, we, we've been open now. This is our fifth year. Um, we have this space. This is the restaurant. You can oh, see we're the in the restaurant now. Yes. Hold up. Okay. 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 Can you do like a little, I'm, so, um, I'm going to move. So what's really cool about a restaurant is that there's a big garage door there. So it's open, um, wow. during the summer, we have a terrace that goes into the street. Um, there are no cars that pass in front in the summer. The street is blocked off for pedestrians. Um, if you guys look around, we have tons of art everywhere. Wow. Our lovely lady there. Wow. You can see over there as well. We have tons and this is. Oh, there's the rums. <laughs> um, so yeah, we concentrate on um, everything that that that's tropical, that has um, tropical roots. And obviously my husband and I both have uh, roots in the Caribbean, we're Canadian, but my dad was from the Bahamas and my husband is originally, um, his parents were from Haiti. Uh, so we've mixed all of those things together with the influences that we've had from Montreal as well. Um, I lived in downtown, so I've been surrounded by all sorts of people from all sorts of uh, countries um, that also have palm trees. So we've just incorporated all of that into the restaurant and that kind of created who we are. 
That's incredible. And uh, shout out to one of my close friends um, who is also married to a Haitian. She's on today. So for all my Haitian people, I would say, <laughs> um, that's amazing. I knew I knew you were the real deal when I saw Pick Leaves and um, and Grio on yep. your mate. <laughs> um, OK, cool. So so it's you and it's your husband, Ralph. Yeah. And three whole children. We have three boys together um, that are pretty young, six, five, and two. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So talk to me a little bit about, because it's a lot to be, uh, have a partner and have children and then also choose to do like your whole business with your partner. So how did that come about? How did y'all join voices in that way um so what's really cool is um we've been together for a really long time so we met at 15 and uh we dated um when we were like 18 so we've been together now for like 22 years not to say how old i am Come on, Black <laughs> um and um so we've always worked in different things he's always been um in the kitchen he went to culinary school he worked his way from dishwasher to head chef um, and in 2012 or 13, he and I decided that it'd be cool to, to start looking to be able to work abroad. So I got a first opportunity to go work in Mexico. Um, and after a year, I came back to Montreal. And then after that, he found a job in the Cayman Islands. Um, I went to visit him and we, he worked from there. Um, and then when we came back to Montreal, we realized that we couldn't really find um, something that represented us. Like we, we just wanted to go to restaurants that were nice and we had gotten accustomed to, to going to great Caribbean restaurants that had like, you know, really nice atmospheres and stuff and you couldn't find it in Montreal. And mm. it all been like in the back of our thoughts to want to open our own restaurants, to do something together. Um, and so that's how Palm came to be, you know. Um, I've always worn uh, front office. Um, I've always worked um, bar, bartending. I did like, you know, sommelier classes and everything. Um, he's super good in the kitchen. Um, so that's how we created Palm. And um, I became the front of the house. He became the back of the house. Um, obviously, we, you know, we communicate. Um, but I am the front, he's the back. And the way that it kind of works is that we have our sections and we have our responsibilities. We have meetings. And it, it basically is the separation. That's how we make it work um, to separate. It's not all of us all the time together, um, <laughs> almost. But I mean, when he's in his kitchen, when he decides to do a menu, it's his decision. I'll taste it. I'll give my input. The same thing with cocktails or how I design the menu or how I design the restaurant or if I'm finding new art. We oh. talk to each other, we get feedback. But at the end of the day, it's his decision if if I don't like something, some like there are things on the menu that I didn't like that I said, I don't think this is going to work. And they're super popular today. So it's good that we don't, you know, here's a video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's amazing. OK, so so kind of backing up a little bit, you have this beautiful partnership. Um, the two of you kind of cross paths when it came to purpose and you made this decision to kind of venture out together to solve what you saw as a as a problem that Montreal did not have options um, for the kinds of Caribbean restaurants that you wanted to see. And so when you do that, um, you are operating in your lane, which is all things I, I think I'm hearing you say operations, business management, um, yeah, I'm, I'm everything administrative, uh, okay. social media, uh, marketing, um, servers, bars, um, experience of the restaurant in general. Okay, because I'm looking at you and I do see like five heads with five hats on them. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait, what? You do all of that. Um, okay, and, and so your husband is, um, so Ralph is over the food and that's yeah. kind of 
was domain. And so one of the things that I, I heard you say, which is really interesting because in the culture um, and, and particularly in black culture, we, we have these aspirations to be, um, you know, Jay-Z, Jay-Z and Beyonce. <laughs> you want to come together, you want to find your king and your queen and we glamorize it. And, and it's really beautiful thing to aspire to, but when you get down to it on a day to day, daily basis. Um, one thing that I heard you say that was really interesting is that um, we have our separate domains. And it, it's, it sounds like there's a little bit of um, trust to uh, be in alignment, even if you don't fully agree. Can you tell me the last time you disagreed with a decision, but then went forward with it anyway I think you kind of alluded to it uh well on the the food side um Ralph does magical things with food and um I I I'm not in his head he doesn't think like a normal person he's super Mm. creative um so a lot of times I'm very pragmatic and I'm like I don't know I don't think this is gonna work um so one of the things that is on our menu right now is the grillo salad um, it is super popular. People love it. It has watercress mixed with carrots and um, it grillo. It has like a kind of general towel, a sweet, spicy sauce to it. Um, when he described it to me, I was like, what? Um, I really didn't get it. Um, I I was like, it's hot. It's cold. I don't think it's going to travel well. I don't think it's going to work. Um, and I, I really was trying to put my foot down on it, like to say no. Um, but at the end of the day, um, when he gave me the menu to type it up and to, you know, make the design of it, it was there. So um, it was a decision that he took and it went super well. So sometimes um, you have to trust the person that you with. Um, and on my side, there's a lot of things like I've um, talked about bringing in a certain rum or I've made cocktails that he was like, no this no uh you know like uh you know I have traditional like beach cocktails but sometimes I'll like you know go with a bitter uh daiquiri that has um infusions of teas and Mm -hmm. not into it um but at the end of the day it's my bar so he was like you know what we'll test it out see if it works and you know if after like you know two months people don't order it we'll take it off the menu and that's kind of what we've just um always done it's, it's not the end of the world. Basically, if something doesn't work in a restaurant, it's not the end of the world. We take it off, put a new thing and we just, you know, change it up. And most of our decisions are taken like that. So if wow. you're really passionate about something, I'll let you go about it. And the same thing for me. And you just have to trust the process that it'll go well. He like does everything in the kitchen. And sometimes I look at stuff and I'm like, wouldn't it be more practical if you did this or that? And at the end of the day, it works for him. And I just have to let that process be. And you can, I already have, like, as you said, five hats on a lot of <laughs> right. stuff that I'm doing. Um, when it comes to him and his suppliers and his staff and whatever he needs to get fixed or done, or I have to kind of let that go and be like, he's in charge of that and he can do it. And that's how, at the end of the day, when I get home, I can be with my husband and we don't have to be talking constantly about the restaurant because I know he's taking care of his part. I'm taking care of my part and we'll, you know, we'll connect when it needs to be connected. Ooh, for those of you who are taking notes today, <laughs> um, the title of this sermon is <laughs> trust, trust your partner and trust the process. Amen. Let the church say amen. Okay. Um, <laughs> so for let's, let's turn a little bit to your physical space, because what I'm noticing behind you, and I think someone in the chat, side note, I have, I do have an administrative announcement. I believe that many people in the chat, your name is coming up as Seema. Seema is the the fearless diversity, equity, and inclusion leader at Lightspeed. And I don't know what that technological glitch is about, but everybody enjoy being Seema in the chat. Seema <laughs> is us. We are her. Okay. <laughs> Back to our regularly scheduled program. Okay. So your physical space, somebody in the chat said they thought that you were, um, that was like a fake background and ah, friends, yeah, you know, it could be, um, but it's not, it's that real. Um, and so what I'm noticing behind you, it looks like a lot of art and beautiful things on, um, 
on the wall. Can you talk a little bit about the physical space and what might be on the walls if we walked into Palm? Um, so all the art that I, when I, when I designed the restaurant, I wanted like a light airy space, um, reminiscent of like, when you go on vacation, you go to like a, you know, four-star hotel or whatever, five-star hotel, there's like nice restaurants. Everything's really light, yeah. flowy. Um, unfortunately I'm in Montreal, so I had to do with the space that I had. Um, so I incorporated, um, artists that I found a little bit everywhere. There's some artists from Montreal, but there's also um, people that I found on TikTok. Um, mm -hmm. I try to go for people that represent us. Um, so we got inspired by our first piece of art, which is um, a poster that was in my mother-in-law's uh, hair salon in Montreal. And uh, my husband loves it. It went from the salon to his bedroom, to every apartment, every place we've ever lived. Um, from, you know, Cayman Islands to back to Montreal to everywhere we've moved, this was there. And when we opened the restaurant, it was the only design input that he put in the restaurant. And I totally that agree. Poster. <laughs> <laughs> so his poster is here. Um, and then besides that, we have artists that I found um, through the internet, through people wow. that I know, um, beautiful pictures of the Caribbean. I have like pictures of 1970s Bahamas from my dad, where you see wow. the bank of Montreal in the Bahamas, which is kind of wow. cool. Um, and then we have like, you know, significant things for us. I have like old records from my dad of Harry Belafonte. I have um, activists from Montreal, uh, Martin Jennings and um, other people that are doing um, different things in the community. So when you come to Palm, first of all, you'll walk into a vestibule and that's the place that you'll find most of the art. Um, if you want at the end, I'll show you, I'll walk around um, and give you um, all the art that's there. And those are all BIPOC artists. Um, some are part of the LGBTQ plus um, community. Um, you know, I have uh, Marsha Johnson and other activists that, you know, brought something special that were BIPOC and um, part of the community. And I thought it was important to incorporate it into the restaurant. So um, you, the minute you walk in, you kind of feel like, oh, I, there's a lot of art here and it kind of represents me. So I feel mm -hmm. comfortable here. And that was the, the feeling that I wanted to give to people that, you know, it's not necessarily foreseen. There's like art, but then there's knickknacks around it. It makes you feel, uh, you know, more comfortable around the house. Yeah, yeah. And I actually didn't understand that from, from our previous meetings that um, that you created a vibe. That vibe is you. You have a, a poster. Uh, you have you have pictures from from your family and from your past and all of these influences. Talk to me because you you kind of brushed over the TikTok thing, and I'm like, wait, we find an artist on TikTok now. I don't even know if I know how to work TikTok. <laughs> um, how 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 did you find art and artists and connect with them on the internet, and then bring some of their flavor into your space that's physical? Um, actually, it came by accident. I heard myself last year in February, and for the first time in I don't know how long, I was actually stuck at home, not moving. Um, so I discovered TikTok, um, wow. got onto it. And like the first feeds that I used to get were like an artist. So I would like an artist and then I would get another and then another and another. And then suddenly I had a, like a list of people from Canada, from the US, um, from South America, um, the UK. I even uh, got one from um, Congo. Um, and then all these people were on my feed and I was like, oh my God, I could, and then obviously I had nothing to do. So I thought of redoing some parts of the restaurant and redesigning and refining stuff. So basically my point became to redo the vestibule when you walk into the restaurant. So I redid the whole space and then I needed a lot of art. So I just reached out and just sent a message. I did my first TikTok and it was just, hey guys, I'm looking for art, send it to me or like showcase your stuff. And Tons of people sent me messages and that's how I found almost all the art that I have um, at the front of the restaurant. What? So you sent out, so you were at home, you know, injured or unable to do much. Yeah. But what you did do was send out the bat signal through, through the TikTok and started finding all of these people and said, I like, I want to feature your art. 
That's incredible. That's <laughs> incredible. Um, I, I, I love it so much. Do you sell the art or? Um, um, not for the moment. I don't sell the art. Um, these are these are things that I bought from for me. I, I can encourage the artists. Um, I have a list when you come to the restaurant of like all the links. If you want later, I can send it over and they can yeah. share it with the video. I have just the links of like the TikTok pages or Instagrams of the people that I've, um, you know, bought stuff from. Um, I encourage people to just like, you know, look at or like, you know, if I have a chance, sometimes if I take a picture, I'll tag the artist in. I don't have tons of followers on Instagram, but there's like 4,000 people that see a link for an artist that's like in a restaurant in Montreal. So um, when people ask for sure, um, I haven't really done art to sell because when I buy art, I get too attached to it. And <laughs> when I put it somewhere in the restaurant, it kind of becomes um, part of us and I can't, I can't part with it. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so you heard it here first. If you are trying to get put on to some amazing artists that are BIPOC, that's Black, Indigenous, people of color, and or LGBTQ+, go to Palm. Get the physical in-person experience. Um, Leanne is, is alchemizing things from the internet and making it physical. I love that so much. Um, location. So you are in Montreal, but you're in a neighborhood called The Village. What so, all is going on in The Village? <laughs> so historically, The Village was um, a neighborhood that was um, just friendly to everyone that was gay. Um, it's basically, that's how it started. Um, people um, felt that they were being discriminated. There was discrimination. It was, you know, outlawed. Um, it wasn't legal. This mm -hmm. is a place where they found a little niche. Back then, it was a neighborhood that wasn't, you know, very developed. It was in the east of the city. It's like a little bit of off of downtown. Um, you know, it was very industrial. People kind of forgot about it. Mm -hmm. So that's what created the village. Um, mm -hmm. And then after that, from years and years, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And like now, um, we have one of the biggest prides in Canada. It's like 10 to it's 10 days. It's huge. Wow. Um, and uh, if you've looked at pictures in the past, we had like big um, art installations. We got known for that as well. There was a, an entire canopy of rainbows um, the year that we opened here. Um, every day, year, there's something different. So when we got here, we found a space um, that we liked, um, that I knew that I could work with. And um, the first thing that you know, came to us was like, oh, if we open here, anyone can come and anyone can, can feel comfortable in our space. And as the years progressed, we realized, hey, you know, we're actually giving a place to BIPOC people that um, represent the 2S LGBTQ plus community and by them, you know, feeling comfortable here, we're kind of giving them their space. And that's kind of what started um, the, the reason for staying here, for continuing, for the art, the, the, the events that we do and um, it kind of inspired it all. Yeah, yeah, that's that's incredible. Location is so important. And if anybody knows anything, uh, the light speeders that are on, light speed is actually started in, in the village. Um, and I think, I think they might be close by you. Yeah, they're really close. When I signed my contract um, with Lightspeed to, when we started the restaurant, um, it was in summer and I basically walked from Lightspeed to back to the restaurant. Um, <laughs> so we're, we're really close. <laughs> That's amazing. And the, and the founder of, of Lightspeed, Dax, is... Um, Obviously, he's he's a brown man, but um, he's also gay, and so he tells the story often about um, how Lightspeed started, and and particularly uh, with the LGBTQ community, and it has it has grown so much so that even the customers um, of of the POS system are are sharing in this community. So I think I think it's just a really beautiful thing. Uh, you talked to me a little bit before you kind of hinted that you are trying to, uh, this year do an event that you did last year, uh, around voguing. Is that right? <laughs> okay. Let's uh, go multi-purpose space. <laughs> so this year, um, I, 
I often have these like crazy ideas and this year I wanted to do something special for pride and I didn't want it to be um just like a party like everyone else does um there's a there's a last day of pride here where the the parade ends in the village and everybody comes and it's a crazy day but like we have like 10 days before that as well so I wanted to find something that I could give back to um so on one of the days during pride I gave space basically I gave my restaurant to a troupe that is called La Maison Saint Coffa Um, they're based here in Montreal um they also have like factions uh around North America as well I think there's one in in Toronto and um in other cities in the states as well um they um do face voguing um they do poetry they had someone that was playing violin it was really a great opportunity for them to showcase their talent their community um so basically that day we sold tickets people came in we did like a special kind of like menu and um it was showcased them they did uh we had a person that was doing um a fashion show so she was um she had models, uh, people showing off our designs. We had people voguing. We had people doing face. We had poetry. We had spoken word. Um, and we had the violin. Um, and all of that during the evening and all the proceeds that we raised during that night went to that organization. And I'm hopeful that this year we can find either them again or another organization that is BIPOC and needs a space during Pride. Um, to do something, to to reach out to the community, to raise money, to um, find a new way um, to put themselves out there. And if they want, they can always, uh, you know, contact me and see what we can do um, during Pride or during another department. Obviously, summer is always more fun in Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. That is incredible. Um, one of the things that I, another point I wanted to highlight, and I, I've seen this even with my own friends who have physical spaces, is that, you know, there's multiple ways to, to engage. So you have, you can have food by day, but then shut it down and come on let's let's have a voguing event let's really put poetry and other forms of art on the map simply by having a physical space so shout out to you shout out to Ralph like that is incredible um there's something else that you collect and uh it's drinkable (laughs) um so you have quite the extensive rum collection if y'all go online right now and you check out the menu and you go to the rums it's like 65 rums let's talk a little bit not just about the rums but maybe about how the rum came to be because you you put it on the menu yeah um well it came from um my background a little more um my dad was a drinker he liked to have a drink he comes from a very large family there are 22 kids um well they were 22 kids um so when I was young, we would go to the Bahamas for our summer vacations. Um, my uncles would sit around tables. There was always a bottle of rum, playing dominoes. Yeah. Um, and then there would always be a discussion of what is the best and this, and I found this, and this is older, and this and that. And it kind of became part of you know, my upbringing. I always had like rum at my house. My dad would always offer it to people when they came in. Um, it became something that um, is welcoming. And then when we opened the restaurant, obviously I had to have rum. I worked in the Cayman Islands where I was, you know, in the front of a bar that had like a hundred something rums from all around the world. And I kind of wanted to recreate that back in Montreal. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't have that extensive of where I worked before, but (laughs) but, um, I have a pretty large collection of rum right now. Um, And it's to make people discover um, rum and not just a rum and coke or a cocktail they're great in those things as well but um, to, to know that you know rum can be like whiskey it has different ages it has different sections it has different um, textures it has different intensities some are spicy some are not um, depending on where you're from like in Martinique they're agricole so they're really dry rums Um, If you go to Puerto Rico, they're more sweet. If you go to Barbados, they have like molasses. They have all these different um, qualities to them that I want people to discover. Um, So I'm usually at the restaurant to um, explain rums. I love people that sit at the bar. Um, And if you make friends with my husband, you will probably get a little bit of rum at some point in your visit because he likes to partake with clients sometimes and let them enjoy some rum. Yeah. 
All right. So, um, rum tasting is a new wine tasting. Is that what I'm hearing? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm very into this. Uh, that is 64 more rums than I currently own. <laughs> um yes 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 the chat is lit people are planning come on y'all get your tickets together get your you know your vaccination cards we are going to Montreal uh we are gonna go chill with Ralph in the back we're gonna pour up some rum we're gonna have some dominoes we're gonna talk talk a lot of smack and um, <laughs> have a good time so for these rums in particular, because you have some that are, um, let's just let's just keep it real, uh, Canada, right? Like people are coming from from all over the place. Uh, there are some rums on the menu where I, I would imagine if I'm if my family is from a place that's very far away from Canada and I roll up and they have it on the menu, I've seen. I've seen my Haitian friends go crazy and my Jamaican friends be like, oh my God, I wasn't going to drink, but today I'm drinking because they got this. Last time I had this, my grandfather had it or so on and so forth. Do you have any stories like that where someone has come in and been like, wait, how did you get this rum? <laughs> well, um, you know, obviously we have like the really popular um, Haitian rums at the restaurant because we're in Montreal, there's a big Haitian community, so I could not not have them. So I have all the Um, I would say the people that are most amazed are the people that come from the French Caribbean side. So everyone from Guadeloupe and Martinique and stuff like that, their rums are really hard to find in Canada. Um, so I have the Trois Rivières and the Martinique um, uh, Lamoni, and these are rums that are really hard to find in Montreal. Um, and I will have people just just explain to me how long it has been since they've had the drink because they live in Montreal, and every time they want a bottle, they need to ask their cousin that's going back and. Bring uh -huh. it <laughs> Uh, or they get it when they go to France, um, you know, from someone that went somewhere on vacation. So mm -hmm. when they come to the, the restaurant, like I, I've had a grown man who was a grandfather with his family, just like giddy on a chair, just <laughs> dancing along because he was like, oh my God, I'm going to get my rum. And, you know, it makes, it makes me really happy. And then to, to also have um, me that knows how they like it. Like uh, a tea punch is like a traditional way to, to drink these rums. Okay. And when I give it to them the way that they would get it at home, which is just like two clumps of sugar, a little lime, you mix it up, you make your own drink. It makes them like feel like, oh my God, I feel like I'm home. Nobody messed up my drink. I didn't have to explain what this was. So yeah. I do my due diligence um, as much as I can to figure out what is the like most basic way that people drink rum somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I, I know most of them so that when someone comes in and they're like, I want that room, I also say like, oh, do you want it like this? And then they're like, oh, you know how to do that? You know and how then, to make it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it makes it, you know, it's a little research that we put in the back of it. Wow. That is amazing. So not only can I come and I can find a little taste of home, you're also going to give it to me the way that it's supposed to be given to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's I mean, good. Um, so there is, if, first of all, the rums are rare. Some of them, how, how do you get them? Uh, well, I live in Montreal, so I have to go through um, the, our liquor store, which is provincially owned. It, um, I have to get everything that I have on my shelves with a special stamp that we have here in Quebec. Um, I get most of them through being very, very persistent with um, the liquor company, which is called the SAQ. And okay. basically, I have to scour their site to find the rum that I want. And then I need to find where it is. And then I need to contact them to make sure that it's there. And I will go around this province and find wherever they have it. I will go. I've, I've driven three hours to go get like four bottles of rum somewhere really far, get back to Montreal, and then have to go to the restoration part of the SAQ to get the, the, the tags that go on it. There are still a ton of rums that I would love to have in the restaurant that I cannot because I can't import them. But um, when I see them come in, I, I, as you said, I get obsessed and I need to get it. And I just, I go far and long and I've done ridiculous things to go get a bottle of rum. <laughs> oh my gosh. Listen, this is this is this is 
this is the real right here. Okay. This is a, a, a mother, a business owner, a mom of three whole boys, you know, all into the age of seven driving three hours and, you know, in these, uh, Montreal streets to try to go and get it, get rum just for you, just to have a slice of home or just to experience um, a place through your taste buds. So uh, yeah, the chat is definitely shouting out your dedication. That's incredible. So clearly you make good choices. That's <laughs> what I'm, I'm picking up from this. I'm like, I need to, I need to take more notes. Um, all right, so you make really great choices. You're very persistent. Um, one of the choices that you made as a business owner uh, was actually how you even conducted the search for the stuff in your restaurant, but particularly the stuff that, uh, that, that you use to run the business. And one of those things is uh, what's called a POS system. It stands for point of sale. So for those of y'all who are like me and needs a little bit of education, you walk into the restaurant and there's usually a host or hostess station and there's a, a screen. Um, that's, that's the thing, right? And so you have that and a whole bunch of other stuff in your restaurant. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you choose who to go with and, and what to put in there and which vendors to go with? Um, well, I wanted to open this restaurant, but I wanted to be on the same level as the restaurants that I liked and I like to go to. And I didn't want to be considered just like below the grade or like, oh, it's just like a black owned like, you know, put on the side. So I really did my research and seeing, okay, these are the restaurants that I want to be compared to because I know that the food and the experience that we're giving is this. Now, what are they using as their POS? What are they using uh. as suppliers? Um, where are they going to get their things, their glasses, um, you know, um, anything that we've had in, uh, that we have in the restaurant. I've done a research on the POS was, um, there was tons of companies I could have gone with a lot of other places. Um, first of all, Lightspeed was one for me local because it was like right beside. Um, and second of all, I saw places that had good reputations that were really high ranked, were part of the Lightspeed family. Um, mm -hmm. That made me realize like, you know, if I want to be on the same step, I need to be on the same um, business wise as these other companies. So I have to, you know, do diligence and, and actually research what are they using? Why are they using it? Um, and after doing a lot of like, yes, no's kind of lists of who's using what and how, um, I fell on Lightspeed and, and it was the best choice for me. Um, and, and I keep doing that every time I integrate a new system, a new uh, reservation system or a new whatever um, supplier, I, I do the same research every time to make sure that I'm on the same you know, bar as everyone else. It's something that we have to do as uh, business owners, especially as black business owners. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. What I, what I heard you say is you're looking to where, to who is where you want to be and you're, you're emulating the same kinds of decisions that those people are making. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Um, and why is that so important to you, particularly as a Black business owner? Why is it so important to you to, to be on um, that next wave? Um, I think it's essential because a lot of people will look at our business and look at us, um, especially mm. when we started, and like assume the bottom of expectations. Mm. Um, <laughs> so when we... Um, started the restaurant and we were saying what our concept was, I would say that 90% of the people listening to us, um, that it'd be people that were looking, that we were looking for loans or just, you know, ways to, to get bigger. Um, these people looked at us and were like, oh, they're like two young black people, like I mm. don't see what this is. So by um, researching and making sure that the products that I have in my restaurant reflect the product that I'm selling, the, the, the image that I want to give, the, the experience that I want people to have. It was really important for us to, to try to elevate, not just, I don't want to just pay more to pay more. I, I want to make sure that when people walk in, they realize, yo, she, she has like a proper system. Um, mm -hmm. They're not like, you know, scribbling stuff on paper. Like we, they have like a system that works. Um, like anytime you walk into the restaurant, you can see your entire kitchen. 
Like you can see it from the, the minute that you walk in. And that was really important for us because we want to make sure that people know like it's clean, it's nice. Like you can see my chef cooking. You can see what we're doing. You can see where our products come from. Um, you can see all our supplies. We, we were very transparent because we wanted people to understand that, that you come here, that you come to a, another restaurant, the price yeah. that I'm charging you is because I'm giving you a really good service. I'm giving you a really good product. And I want you to respect me as you would respect any other res restaurants. It's, it's, it sucks that we have to like go well and beyond sometimes. But um, if that's what I have to do to be respected and, and maybe the next person that opens a restaurant after me, um, they'll just assume, oh, what? well, if they did it, they're probably going to do it as well. And it's going to be really nice. So, you know, they won't have to do these like hurdles of going over and beyond on, on anything. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's so important because um, for so many of us who are the first to do something or maybe the first to break ground in an area um, who, who are black, talk all the time about having to be twice as good. This is what that looks like in practice. But um, what you are doing is you are allowing for people to look at you and to look at Ralph and to be like, look what they're doing. And and I think it's, it's beautiful, this notion that there would be um, like a relational trust that translates simply because everything y'all are doing is done in excellence. That is amazing. So Thank you. <laughs> Kudos. I don't know which hand it. <laughs> um, yes, yes. Black excellence. Thank you, Shonda. Um, so I noticed this theme of tenacity and let's not pretend like there's not a huge COVID sized elephant in the room. You have a physical space, serving food, global pandemic. How, what what happened and how are you still standing today? Because I know, unfortunately, there have been so many small businesses and particularly black owned businesses or um, LGBTQ owned businesses that unfortunately didn't make it through the pandemic. So what all is so so special and magical over there? What'd you do? Um, we got up. I got I would say I I got obsessed. Um, I, got obsessed. I, I got obsessed. Um, <laughs> What happened is that um, we were told um, at the beginning of the pandemic, we turned around and it was like on a Thursday, they told us Sunday is your last day of operation and we are going to take out only. Um, and we had like three days to figure out, holy, we have to do takeout and we have to do delivery and we have to do all of these things and we've never done it before. Um, wow. So we started like, you know, we bought takeout containers, uh, we got on Uber Eats and Skip and all these different platforms. Um, we put signs in our door saying like, we're doing takeout. Um, and to be honest, um, we weren't great at the beginning because we had like this menu that had no way of, you know, traveling well. We had like octopus and like uh, scallops yeah. and stuff like that. It's not really something that you have on a takeout menu. Um, so we sat down on like the second day of our takeout and we're like we're gonna figure out what works on a menu and like we live 20 minutes away we put stuff in containers and drove home and if it made it it stayed on the menu if it didn't make it it was scrapped and we did something new and then after that um because of you know the restaurant and where we are and what we've been trying to do then I decided to do I wanted to have like compostable um containers I didn't I didn't want to have like plastic stuff and like you know, the environment and all of that. So I was like, okay, let's go for compostable. So I found a local company in Montreal that does compostable containers. Oh, wow. They're actually based in the village as well. Yeah. And it made our product look nicer. And then from there, we've been building. So we've went from like plastic containers and like these little bags to now we have like beautiful, you know, paper bags with our logo on it. We have like compostable containers. When you receive your food, it's still hot and still crispy if it's dried chicken. Because yeah. everything we do, we like test it out. I've done so many just rides with my food around the city to just figure out, is this good? When Ralph puts something new on the menu, it's something that we test out. Sometimes you'll see stuff in the menu in the restaurant right now, and it's not on takeout because we know it don't, it, it's not going to be good. We don't yeah. do it. If you don't find a container that works for it, we don't put it on the menu. So it's really trying to figure out how can I give the best experience possible 
um, in a takeout, in the in-house and whatever. We live in Montreal, so we've been closed four times. Uh, we've like closed, open, closed, open, closed, open. The last time was in January. So this is um, hopefully. Um, Come on. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> The last time that we closed, so now we're open at 50% capacity. We're going closely to opening full capacity soon. Um, and now we're kind of balancing, can we do takeout still and having the room open? We still do it. Sometimes, you know, people want to like order and we're like, I can't give you quality. So I have to shut down the systems, do in-house or like, you know, change it up. Um, we're still figuring out, we're doing our best to you know, balance it all out. But yeah, when when we decide to do something, we go all out. And if I become obsessed with something, I'm I'm gonna go for every detail possible Boy, to make obsession. Happen. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So there's been so many people commenting in the chat just as you were talking. Y'all listen. Every time this woman wants something, she's in her car. She's testing it. She's going to get bottles of rum. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to actually see you on these streets so I can just hop in. I know I'm going to get some good food. I know I might have a drink, you know? Um, but, but like hear this, she's saying we, we want to make sure that we would eat our food <laughs> if it was delivered to us and we live 20 minutes away. So we're going to figure out how to make things stay crispy and hot <laughs> as we deliver. Um, I'm also not about, you know, ruining the environment. I have babies in these streets, so I gotta make sure, you know, things are compostable. And I found a local vendor, like this is, this is integrity. It is uh, Hustle 101. I, I love it so, so much. There is something that you did though, uh, and I cannot, <laughs> okay, I'm glad you know. There's something you did. We cannot let this time end without you telling us a little bit about how you played with fire. So um, I was, during the pandemic, folding through some papers. We were closed. We only do takeout. Um, and then after that, I realized, um, I found this like biodegradable traveling barbecue um, that was compostable that you could just like go camping with and like do a hole, put it in and it's gone like in six months. And I was like, I, what? And then Rob, I, I want it. <laughs> so then I was like, this is a great idea. But like, what if I put this in my restaurant and I prepare all the food for people and then they just have to bring this little barbecue because at that point, you know, it was locked down. Nobody could do anything. The only thing you could really do is like go sit in a park with your friends. Montreal is really big on just sitting in a park eating because it's the only way that you can drink in the park. So mm. um, that came from there. So I was like, if people want to eat, but they want to eat my food, but I can, they can make their self a barbecue in the park everything put it back in the bag put it in the compost and it's all good to go um so again I got obsessed I um I really wanted to figure out where I could buy this I saw this like in a pamphlet of a store they were like yeah I, I like we're, you're not gonna buy like a case from us like it was like the the price of the store and I was like I can't afford that at all mm -hmm. um so then as I do often I found out who makes these barbecues contacted them who is the supplier in Canada uh, contacted that person and just basically told them like listen I need your product mm -hmm. um, but I can't pay like $25 a barbecue because I want to sell them to people um, mm -hmm. is there a way that like how many how much do I need to order to get it at cost or you know as a, a vendor so um, the first answer was like no because I would have been the entire space of my restaurant would have been filled with barbecues <laughs> and I was like I can't I can't first afford it and second of all I can't make it happen so I made a deal with um, the company to say like listen you need promotion people need to know about your barbecues um and i have somewhat of a following at this moment mm -hmm. um and i'll do everything that i can to like promote this product not just for me but for you as well so um we made a deal i got it at cost um so that i could sell it um in the barbecue kit and you know not lose and too much money um mm -hmm. so then that created the barbecue experience at palm um we've had people from around canada order it from other for other people and like we've you know, found ways to bring it to other people. Um, so that that was the first creation. 
Um, and then from there, I've every time I've posted a picture of our barbecues, it always says Castle's Grills under it. It's their publicity. Um, oh. We got exposure in magazines and um, different outlets for what we were doing. And at the same time, they got exposure. So it was a win-win situation. Um, and I'm super grateful. I couldn't have I've done this experience without, you know, them trusting that we would do something great with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I see a lot of people commenting. Um, she is an epic human because <laughs> what I also heard was if you see something you want uh, and it's a product and it's it's not fully accessible to you, whether that's through cost or whether that's through rarity, you're like, well, who all made that? <laughs> but I'm going to go find that person and then I'm going to make a deal with them. And I will give you, I'll give you whatever I can. But in this case, it was um, social capital. It was publicity through your Instagram um, to get these grills, to get this bar these barbecues at cost. Uh, that is so amazing. That is so amazing. I hope I hope people here are taking notes because <laughs> that no is not for you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So we have a, a few minutes left um, before I do anything else. I first just want to thank you because you have a lot going on. Um, I want to invite everybody to get your phones. Uh, get your Instagrams ready, uh, get your notepad ready. Um, we're going to kind of drop some, some resources. And if you are far away from Montreal, this is also your time to shine. Okay. Like this, we're going to give so much love uh, to Palm from afar. So first and foremost, how can we reach you? How do we follow you all? So you can reach us on Instagram. That's our biggest platform right now. It's resto underscore palm. Um, okay. Instagram, it's the same thing on Facebook and on Twitter. Um, you can go to our website, which is www.restopalm.ca. Um, on our website, we have um, gift cards. If you want to like gift it to someone that lives in Montreal, if you have a friend and want to send them some food, we also have the links for delivery. So you can actually just go on our site click delivery and send it to someone if you're in Montreal or send it to one of your friends or your auntie or your grandmother. Um, and you also have a link to our merch tour where we sell everything with our new logo um, that was designed by a BIPOC artist as well. Um, she made it an amazing logo for us. It's like rainbow and it has like all our colors. Um, you have um, shirts that just have like embroidery in gold, but you also have like hoodies, crop tops, hats um like we've done what we could um and you can just click the link and go there and that encourages us a lot and encourages the artist as well she gets a cut on everything that we sell um so she did a nice design and um she gets um some of the the profits from it like i love her stuff i i have it on everything that's what i saw on our takeout bags now and everything yeah. I'm, okay. I'm on here now. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> this merch is amazing. Okay. And so you're saying um, the artist, she also gets a cut. I really, I love this beanie right here. Um, <laughs> I would, <laughs> I would encourage any of any of us, you know, um, when you are wearing amazing and fly merch, it's a conversation starter. So definitely wear the merch, even if you're not in or from Montreal, and then tell the story. When somebody asks you about it, definitely talk about um, Leanne and Ralph and how you're planning your trip to Montreal. I love this so much. This, this merch is so fresh. Um, let me see. Okay, crew neck. Look at everybody is everybody's about it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, yeah, just if they, if they want to partner with you par personally, is should people DM you on IG? The, they can DM me on IG if you have any questions about the restaurant. If you, um, you're looking for a place to do. A partnership for any type of um, event or anything you can yeah. also DM me I am the hat of the DMs on that side you can <laughs> also go to our website um, that has a contact page and then you can just you know fill in your information I'll see your your message and I'll be able to get back to you yeah I love it 
Um, is there anyone, any other orgs or any other artists or, or folks that you would want to plug? We have about four or five minutes left. Um, I don't have my list, but what I can do for you guys, if you want to see some art. Take us on a tour! So we can take oh I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Let's go. <laughs> so um, in the pictures of people integrated, that's my dad. Um, <gasps> really? Can you know, man? Really um, and this is the picture of the poster that I was talking about that was in my wow. and then when you walk around here, you have like uh, Harry Balafonte and wow. uh, this is Rico. He's an activist in Montreal. He does a Black History Tour in Little Burgundy in Montreal. Um, you can check him out. He's really great. <laughs> um, that's why we have a picture of him. I don't see what you guys are seeing. No, yeah, we're seeing amazing things. Keep going. Uh, this is Marlene Jennings. She's another activist. She um, done tons of stuff. She has been elected to office in Montreal and different parts of the city. She's been in parliament. Uh, these are other pictures of uh, just pictures of my family and pictures of, you know, friends of mine. Um, all the black and white pictures that I've seen here are from uh, Robbie Reese. He's um, just a photographer in Montreal. He's also one of my friends. Wow. And he took this great picture. This is a Montreal local hip hop artist named Tay. Wow. And then you have uh, Harry Balafonte again. And uh, I'll, so this is the restaurant you can see. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> this is so dumb. <gasps> and here you got, um, this is our, our arts of all the people that I found on TikTok. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> So here you have this. Here on top, uh, this one. Yeah. Um, this is um, an artist named Benny Bing. He okay. is in Toronto and does these beautiful women. Um, he has all sorts of art. You can check him out on Instagram. It's Benny Bing. Wow. Uh, and then you have uh, James Baldwin and wow. Marsha Johnson that are part of the 2SLGBTQ community. Um, this is an artist from Houston. Sorry, guys. I can't remember her name. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> And then you have like little pieces like this that I found as well. Um, this is our big lady. Wow. I love her too. And this is um, Lily. She's on TikTok as well. And she is from the States as well. She does some great stuff. And that's it. That's our little restaurant. Wow. Wow. This is a <laughs> This is so incredible. I think even just from a design aspect, like, you know, I, this is, this is, this is art. It's, it's just, I'm, I'm speechless personally. <laughs> that usually doesn't happen to me, you guys. <laughs> oh, uh, the wow. Jenka News. So we have like the carnivals and stuff in the Bahamas. Ours is called the Jenka yeah. News. I, you know, for my dad in the family. And yeah. this is uh, the Bahamas. And if you see right there, I, I don't think you guys can see it, but it says Bank of Montreal in ah. Port Bahamas. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Um, listen, listen, listen. If you know of somebody who's in the Montreal area, gift them today with something hot and fresh and crispy and delicious. <laughs> um, yes, please get some merch uh, and, and really support these artists. Um, I just want to thank you so much for your time today, for being vulnerable, for letting us in your space, um, for choosing to share your life and your history and your family um, and, and your food and your vision and your passion. And, and yeah, I mean, everybody is, <laughs> everybody is blowing up the chat. Um, yeah, tell a friend to tell a friend, go on and follow. Uh, Leanne, thank you so much. I also want to shout out to Lightspeed. Listen, we're in a time where um, when companies have diversity, equity, and inclusion, we saw a lot of people make a big, a lot of big promises back in 2020. And um, I'm proud to say that I'm partnered um, with an organization that is actually about that life. Um, so these talks and, and this platform is really important. You saw it here first, like Leanne is next door to a, a company that makes POS systems and they're in the community, which is how she also selected them. Um, so it's really important that as businesses, as much as we're out here, you know, 
canceling people and there's terrible things going on. We're also highlighting when stuff is going right and we're taking that and we're doing more of it. So shout out to Leanne. Thank you so much. You guys. Order something today from Palm, everybody. Happy Black History Month. <laughs> Bye. Bye.